Hello, I'm the Eternal Newbie. The extra L is for like-minded. As in, a player from a game I'm in has met his like-minded match. This is a player I've talked about in the past, Francis. You may remember him from the punch video. Before I get into it, you know the spiel. Subscribes, likes, and comments, they're always welcome. This story takes place in my game with Danther, the no longer hapless Goliath Paladin. I've already talked about Francis, but if you didn't see the video, he's the guy who got into fights with NPCs, always had to be the center of attention, and got punched in game, then sulked for an hour out of game. You know, a real cool guy. I wouldn't say he's the most annoying player ever, but he's certainly top 10. We were still looking for the Dragonborn's mother, but unfortunately, he couldn't make this session. We did have a replacement though. Oh, did we have a replacement. The DM asked Don to join us. He runs the same campaign twice, and she's with the other group. So it's like a mirror universe thing. She's the mirror of Francis. Now I know what you're thinking. And yes, most mirror universe characters are opposites of their counterparts. You know, like Mirror Kirk was evil. But she's like Mirror O'Brien from Deep Space Nine. She and Francis have pretty much the same personality. It is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. If you forgot what Francis was like, let me sum it up for you. When Francis heard the Dragonborn Warlock was missing the session, his exact words were, Good, now we can rape his mom. Okay, maybe he is the most annoying person of all time. My out-of-character response of, what is wrong with you? Didn't have much effect because sadly this would not be the last rape joke he made. It will be the last one I repeat though. This was Don's first impression of him. Now let's talk about her first impression. I didn't know Don before we started. She showed up and after introduction she said, Oh, and here's my slave Pebbles. We'd run into Pebbles in a previous adventure. Francis wanted to take him as a slave but Danther was having nothing of that. In his backstory, Danther abhorred slavery, so he told Francis, You're not taking a slave. Well, Mirror World has no Danther to object, so Don has a slave. Did I mention this is not an evil campaign? She spent much of the rest of the campaign talking about how great it was to have Pebbles as a slave. We were almost done exploring the Yonti base, only two rooms to go. We get to the next room and there's a lizard woman, a couple of yon tea, and a whole lot of eggs. We take care of the yon tea pretty easily, and the lizard woman surrenders, having never attacked us. Don and Francis both want to kill her because, well, of course. But fortunately it's my turn next, so I get between them and combat's over. Turns out she was in charge of taking care of the eggs. Don and Francis approach this situation with the maturity and grace you would expect. They both decide to question the lizard woman in their own special way. Despite the fact that there is only one room left to explore. Gee, I wonder where the mom is. I don't know, maybe in the only room we've not explored? But go ahead, question the nanny anyway. I'll wait. Francis decides to question the lizard woman, telling her such things like he's going to kill her if she doesn't talk, and also dropping a second rape reference here. It went over exactly as well as the first one. Meanwhile, Don really wants to cook an omelet. Like, really, really wants to cook an omelet. You see, the eggs are Yanti eggs, and the lizard woman is like their nanny. So Don's brilliant idea is to cook them. Now, if you've watched my other videos, first of all, thanks. Second of all, you're probably thinking what I was thinking at this moment. It's just not possible. It couldn't happen again, could it? Why, yes. Yes, it could and did. Don wanted to get information out of the lizard woman by threatening the eggs. Two completely different groups on two completely different characters, and they both get the same idea. Is there a villain school somewhere that they all go to that has classes on how to do this? Like Child Threatening 101? Anyway, she really wants to cook this egg, to the point where she's interrupting Francis' questioning part every minute or so, asking what does she have to roll to cook an omelet. I tried to explain that you can't really make an omelet out of eggs that have a baby growing in them, but she wanted her omelet and she's gonna get it. The lizard woman is understandably upset about this since she has already answered all of our questions. Don isn't even bothering with questions anymore. She cooks it and eats the little baby Yanti. 
Yep, we're the heroes who joke about raping prisoners and eat unborn babies. Well, not we, Don and Francis. I did end up letting the lizard woman go, much to the ire of Don and Francis. Hmm, if these two got together and had a kid, I can't even imagine what it would be like. Whoa, you mean he's a time traveler too? We finally find the mother, and it's a boss fight like you'd expect. Lots of Yanti, casters, melee, you know the drill. One of them casts suggestion on me and tells me to kill the bunny. That means on my turn, I have to attack him. This is level 5, Danther. He actually doesn't suck, so there is a chance I will kill the bunny. Don is not happy. Now, if I had to rank them, I would say Francis is slightly better than Don. I mean, they both play characters who would be more at home as torturers in a medieval setting, but Francis doesn't argue with the DM or metagame. Don does both now. She doesn't want her slave killed. Those were her words. So she argues that the Yanti who cast a spell on me wouldn't know the rabbit exists. The DM points out the rabbit had just run into the room, attacked, then run out, so everybody saw him. Don then argues that the Yanti wouldn't know that the rabbit didn't just leave. You know, because that's what adventurers do. They run and attack and then just leave. I mean, we've all heard the tales of the great adventurers who run in, attack the dragon, then leave and are never heard from again. Don is not a happy camper when the DM doesn't change his ruling. Since arguing didn't work, Don does the only reasonable thing left. Metagame. On the rabbit's next turn, it runs into the room and shoots the Yanti who cast at me, hoping to break its concentration. Now, as was pointing out, the rabbit and Don were both out of the room when this happened. They have no idea that this spell has been cast. But the rabbit goes past two enemies, provoking opportunity attacks, to get to the caster. He hits, but it doesn't break concentration. On Dawn's turn, she hits the caster and does break concentration, which is good because my turn is next. The DM didn't say anything about the metagaming, so I don't either. Besides, I wanted to smack Don or Francis, not the innocent bunny. We win the battle and all is good. We rescued Mom and Dawn departs back to her own world. So that was my run-in with not one, but two players of the same type. A match made in the deepest, darkest pits of the Nine Hells. I don't know if you call them more chaotic stupidish or murder hobo like, but they were something. Thanks for watching. And remember, as always, play your character. Don't let your character play you.